very difficult situation for Reginald Daya. So he was supposed to answer for that when he was to be stand and answer in front of Punjab governor Michael Daya. Michael Daya said, what you did was right. I appreciate you, he said. Then it was the time of Reginald Daya to speak there. I started to fire without prayer information. I do not want to give. If I give, or I should have warned. If I have warned, they would have gone back and locked. <laughs> what could the Britishers do? So I didn't give any prayer information. I started firing. The bullets go to over. So I stopped. Otherwise, I would have shot many more. That was the reason I stopped. And all the machines, the bearing could not enter. If it entered, I would have killed around some thousands. So, Punjab governor, under the so difficult he was supposed to be dismissed. That is the original dyer. He was dismissed. And he was not sent out with empty hands. Thousands of, thousands of money he was given. And he was awarded. And he was sent out. It's a later information that he was with the paralyzed with a lot of difficulty for the last. At the deathbed, he died with a lot of difficulties. The people, those who give difficulty for the other people, especially the poor, those who didn't do any wrong of. So he died with a lot of. After this all happened, here is the climax part. Here is the thing we have to listen. The people, the young mind who were supplying water. In that there was a one man, 20 years old boy, young man who was supplying for water on the day. When thousands were tied in front of his eyes, he went to Amit sir, he took bath and he went to the Amit sir, he took oath. And he just promised there, I will take revenge on this British. I will take revenge. From 1919 to 1940 he was waiting. 20 years. We also take every new year a oath. We take from the coming next year onwards, I will not do this, I will change this, I will work for that. We take every year, and but we forget. This man, 20 years he kept in his heart, the firing he kept in his heart. He could not enter into the England, so he went around to different countries. He was an engineer, he was also an engineer. So he went around to many countries, he was not to get enough food to eat, even what was fed for the pigs, he got to eat. And at last, 1940, March the 13th, April 13, 1919, it happened Jolly and Bala massacre. 1940, March 13, so there was this Punjab governor Michael Dyer, he was supposed to give a speech. He was giving a speech in Coxton Hall when the speech was going, when it was about to end. The man, one who was roaming around the countries and he entered inside the hall. He carried a book. The book, inside it was cut exactly to be kept a gun. It was 0 0.2, I forgot the name of the gun. So he kept inside, he hid completely. Nowadays uh, we watch in some movies how they hide the mobiles and they use. He hid the, his gun inside and he carried inside. The Britishers might not have remembered this boy when he did at the 20 years supplying water, now he's a 40 years old. They might not have known, they may not know. 
In third, the Punjab governor, he finished his talk and he was also spoke there and remembered about the 20 years before what had happened. He also spoke that. So happy he spoke. He, when he ended, and he also said, if I get one more opportunity, as I did in India, if I get one more opportunity in South Africa, I will do it, he said. Then this man, he went in front. He went, no more, sir. You are going to end now. Your life is over. He shoot. Six bullets. Two. One entered the heart. And another entered in the kidney. He fell down dead. Do you remember who is this man? Anybody knows? No. Anybody knows who is this man? He is Uttam Singh. He is Uttam Singh. So, he stood there. He didn't go from there. He stood and said, as Daya said, I shot, I shot. The Indian people shed their blood in their soil. They did. As he shouted, he shouted, Uttam Singh shouted, I shot, I shot. The British governor die and die and fall in his soil. I shot him. I am not afraid. And he stood there. Then it was sentenced for him to be dead. And he has to be hung in the same year. They asked him, so, after you hung, where you have to be buried? Where you have to be buried? Uttam Singh said, I don't want to be carried to India. Let my dead body be buried in England. Then the judge laughed. <laughs> this is your patriotism? You don't want to go to your country, your body has not to be taken. Hey fools! You have been ruling my country for hundreds of years. Let my body at least take away six feet of land. And let me be buried here in England. That was he said. And his body was buried there. And Around 1962, at the time of Nehruji, he announced, Nehruji announced, he is a great patriotic, patriotic man of India. In 1974, during the period of Indira Gandhi, his body was brought to India and all the final rituals were done in his village and they have done in the river what the final rituals have been done. So all my dear teachers, on this day, I felt to speak about this Uttam Singh, how he kept and the fire in his heart. At the court, they asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Ram Muhammad Singh Azad. Huh? India, where all religions can live. We live, maybe, different diversity, we are all united. You cannot depart. The day will come, you will be uprooted from my country. You will be eradicated. Everything will be uprooted from India and you will be chased away. He said that happened in 1947, that we got freedom. We enjoy the freedom, the way we live. We enjoy. It is because of like Uttam Singh, Mahatma Gandhi, all of our Tamil freedom fighters like Krista Bowman, even John Sirani, Rani Kittur, Rani Chennama, those people, those who fought for the freedom of India. So I kindly request we all. Nowadays, it's not possible for all of us to get down for work for the country. 
if we do our responsibilities perfectly, we serve for the country. I thank one and all those who in the hot sun bear my speech. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you.